Hey, it's Tracy Taylor from 98.1 The Hawk with Glenn Pitcher from 98.1 The Hawk. And then we've also got Don Morgan and Jim Free from 99.1 The Whale. And we are with Bill from Eureka Camping Center. But uh, I think one of the biggest things that we, we should really talk about is how to take care of your tent because nothing is worse than investing money into a really good quality tent only to discover that you've got holes in it, you've got mildew growing on it, big problems. If you're going to be making camping a part of your life, if it's something you're going to be doing with your family, with your friends, you want to make sure that you get your money's worth. Bill, tell us uh, some of the, the tips you've got for how to maintain right. a tent. Well, I think we're going to start right from the bottom of the tent. Um, any camping tent with a nylon floor, you want to protect that fabric from abrasion. So in an earlier segment, we talked about the site selection and avoiding uh, sharp rocks, uh, uh, tree roots, any of that sort of stuff when possible. But Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate. So the best thing that you can do right at the ground level before that tent gets set up is to get a piece of decent weight plastic. Uh, landscapers plastic, anywhere from 6 to 10 mil is ideal, uh, although there are other materials that you can use. Lay it out on the ground before you set the tent up, and any ground sheet that you select should be smaller than the tent by about six inches. Uh, you don't want anything sticking out from under the tent that can trap and funnel water underneath. Um, so while protecting the tent fabric from abrasion, these also add another measure of moisture protection. That's, uh, That's the best starting point uh, with any tent, big or small. Now we're going to talk a little bit about maintaining these things otherwise. There's a couple of things that wear out on tents. Zippers, frame pieces, shock cord, uh, all of these things can begin to show degradation with use uh, or abuse. So a couple things in setting up a tent and we're going to use the big one as an example. First off, you'll notice that we've already sh shut the door of this tent, okay, before anchoring the corners. And this is a good practice. Make sure the zipper is closed because when we stake these two corners, we don't want to pull those too far apart. That's going to cause the zipper to be very difficult to operate and will lead to premature zipper wear. Uh, and zippers, when they wear out, although you run the zipper pull, you'll find that the zipper does not mesh. Uh, so you, you don't want that to happen. You, you don't want to be out there with 50 safety pins in the campground trying to keep your tent closed. So by zipping the door shut first, then using your stakes to anchor the corners, you will now have a nice tight tent giving you good wind performance. Then you can fasten flies, make sure that's completed. Once you've done this, you have a tent securely anchored to the ground and we discussed the use of the guy lines. Uh, these are critical. You run those out at an angle with an additional stake. That will take and stabilize this whole frame above ground level. Every Eureka tent from one person to 12 person, if it does not already have those lines fastened, it gives you some place where you can add them. The loops will be in place and we've done that here on the small tent. Just a nylon loop and we've taken and fastened a, a, a piece of nylon cord with a small adjuster and this would come out and anchor out here to stabilize the frame again above ground level. So that's how to protect the tent from abrasion. It helps with the moisture protection in the floor, and it also helps to stabilize the frame and prevent wind damage. Um, beyond that, in the campground, uh, you always take this tent apart. Make sure that you dry it thoroughly when you get home. Uh, it doesn't have to have been a rainstorm. It could be something as dew, uh, or as simple as dew or fog and that moisture in the fabric, if you store it for long periods of time without drying it, you will develop mildew. Um, and mildew spots dye the fabric. They will be difficult to get out and your tent's gonna smell terrible. So get it home, open it up, thoroughly dry everything before you repack it for storage. There are other maintenance pieces, uh, issues, frame pieces, fiberglass frames in particular, and with any frame, the shock cord inside. Uh, if the shock cord begins to stretch or give out, uh, you'll need to replace it. And that's a pretty easy job. These are basically like beads on a string. Uh, so you can re-cord a frame easily. Um, 
Fiberglass frames that use metal connectors uh, are found on the outside of the fiberglass. And because of the bungee cord, you try to avoid letting a bare fiberglass piece slam into the metal of the adjacent piece. That will begin to cause damage to the end of the fiberglass. Uh, with aluminum frame tents or tents that utilize steel frame components like the Copper Canyon, uh, that's not an issue. That stuff will be far more durable um, you know, as far as the material itself goes. And I think that that's, that's pretty close. You know, there are more advanced maintenance uh, steps that you can perform on a tent, uh, but it may be a little bit too involved for the video series. Um, so I would encourage people, you know, if you're really getting into this very seriously, uh, if you're going to be out once a month like a Boy Scout, uh, you can stop by the shop and we have much more detailed information here uh, on advanced tent maintenance. Um, you can also go to the, to the Eureka website, eurekacamping.com, uh, and that information will be found there as well. Well, I'm sure you're, you get this from time to time. Uh, Somebody who may put a tent up in the backyard, one of the big rules is don't leave it up. Yeah, sure. yep. Modern camping tents um, use either nylon or more commonly polyester uh, for all of their components. And the worst enemy of any of these synthetic fabrics is UV radiation from direct sun. So with these tents, uh, you do try to limit the UV that this tent is exposed to. Uh, and it's a cumulative process. You cannot reverse UV once the tent has absorbed it. Um, and so if you're going to set a tent up for a longer period of time, either as a, uh, a long-term encampment or for the kids in the backyard, try to get the tent into full shade. Or if the tent's not actually in use, uh, invest in an inexpensive tarp and cover the tent when it's not in use. Let that tarp take the UV. Uh, that'll preserve these fabrics. You get much more lifespan out of your tent. Very good yep. to know. And if you have any more questions about what tent is right for you, how to maintain your tent, you, maybe you need help re-threading your pole, uh, you, you, anything, Eureka Camping Center and our friend Bill are amazing and more than happy to help. So come on in and, uh, and definitely enjoy camping. Mm -hmm.